It's the penultimate MasterChef challenge. After a long battle, Luke, Ping and Jack are the last cook standing. I've loved every stage of the competition. It's been such a challenge for me personally. Now there's a chance of winning it and it would just be incredible. It would be like a dream. Competition has completely taken over my life. First thing I think about when I wake up, last thing I think about when I go to sleep. If I was to win, I mean, obviously, that would be the greatest thing I'd ever done. We've been going at 100 miles an hour all the time, and when I stop and think about that I'm in the final three, the reality kind of hits me and think, yeah, this is kind of a big deal. Now they will embark on the culinary adventure of a lifetime. Over two days in Barcelona, they will be immersed in the legacy that changed the food world. Our three are going to be pushed into a world that questions food. It's perfect. They are going to meet the very people that dare to push those boundaries and see things that are absolutely going to blow their mind. This is Barcelona in Catalonia. Over 30 years ago, as Spain recovered from political upheaval, a different revolution was just beginning. It was led by one young chef who had taken over a restaurant called El Bulli. His name was Ferran Adria, and he was about to change the rules of cooking forever. He's born to break rules. We, in this country, I mean, were lucky that Ferran Adria turned up here. Ferran has pushed us all. It was this passion to test the limits of cooking techniques that opened a door onto a whole new world. Sauces became foams and airs. Liquid nitrogen was used to cook with. Traditional dishes were deconstructed. And a new culinary language was born. And now, I'm going to explain you the spirit of El Bulli. Why, why, why? What breeds creativity is the creation of new techniques and technologies. I mean, whoever invented boiling and frying, it was incredible. And it opened the door to the creation of thousands of new dishes. Over 15 years, hundreds of chefs flocked to his kitchen to become part of the revolution. But in 2011, Adria closed El Bulli, deciding its journey had come to an end and it was time to help others pick up where he'd left off. I think that Ferran opened many doors and left them open. There are many, many roads that still have to be explored. To most, he is now considered the greatest chef of the last 100 years. And the finalists don't know it yet, but in less than 48 hours, they will have to cook for the man himself. It's early morning in Barcelona, and Luke, Ping, and Jack's journey through the culinary revolution is about to begin. But to understand what happened in Spain, they need to start with its traditional cuisine. To be in a country where food plays such a prominent role in culture and society, it's an amazing feeling, and what a great place to learn. To be honest, I don't know much about Spanish food, it's, um, so I guess I'm a little bit out of my comfort zone. And the best place for them to start their experience 
is at La Boqueria Market in the heart of the city. For hundreds of years, traditional tapas, hot and cold snack-sized dishes, have been made and eaten here. I love tapas. You can eat so many different things at one time. You can choose whatever, eat as much as you like or as little as you like. It's like Chinese dim sum. I love it. Avocados. Inspired by the food around them, they must now create three tapas dishes of their own for John and Greg. My brain is whirring with ideas of what they could cook and what I could cook here. I must admit, I'm kind of drawing a bit of a blank. If our three can't get inspiration from this place, they may as well hang up their aprons. I'm panicking a little. Yeah, let's see what happens. Hola, langostino. Uh, me gusta de uh, uh, parsley. They quite appreciate it if you try and speak Spanish. I mean, my Spanish is terrible. Es lo mismo, pero aquí hay una picadita de ajo y perejil. ¿Comprende? ¿De dónde son? De dónde son. And that one. Thank you. <laughs> Gracias. <laughs> There's my one word. I need some fish to deep fry, fry as well. Oh yes. This is great. I love shopping. Who doesn't? This is the start of something really exciting for our three finalists. They've got to be creative. They can cook whatever they like. It's just about pure deliciousness. That's it. That's now we're done. This one. Yeah. Thank you. That's it. Got the ass. Right. I think we're done. The contestants now have an hour and 15 minutes to prepare their three plates of tapas. The crowd has gathered which is going to make them even more nervous. But the fact is, they've just got to cook. They've got to get on with it and do it. Jack, what are you cooking? It's like gambas pilpil. -pil. So it's like prawns, paprika, chilli, garlic, loads of olive oil. It's one of the first dishes that I ever cooked with my girlfriend. We used to sneak down at 2 in the morning after a night out and eat prawns with garlic and chilli. Then we're doing boccarinos on vinegar, and I'm doing it with sort of like a sweet red pepper, fennel, little like relish. Wow. Then one of my absolute favourites, which is um, breaded and deep fried calamari. They're things that I love to cook, but things that I wouldn't probably do in the Master Chef kitchen. I'm really impressed with Jack's thought process because he's taken the smells and the tastes of Spain, and then he is showing us a bit of himself, which is really exciting. That's what we want him to do. What are the nuts for? Sugar. What's wrong? I need sugar. Oh, you want sugar? I thought you wanted sugar. I'll get you sugar. Sucre. Sucre? Ah, gracias. Uno, dos, tres. Dos. Dos. Muchas gracias. Tres. <laughs> On dos, tres. Here you go. Thank you. Thanks. How many people are watching this? Uh, no, <laughs> I don't want to see. You love, isn't it? Invention, creation, it's right up your strata. Yeah, yeah, no, this is definitely my kind of challenge. Really excited about it. I just hope I haven't given myself too much to do, you know? So what are you going to do? Bruschetta with uh, serrano ham and uh, guacamole. Then I'm doing mussels, which I'm going to serve in the half shell. And then gouda, potato and chorizo uh, croquettes. How are you going to make croquettes in this amount of time? Um, well, uh, I've got the water on to boil and we'll see what happens. We might have to improvise. Good. OK, look forward to it. Cheers. I'm really actually quite surprised by Luke. I thought he would have been a little bit more creative, a little bit more adventurous. He seems to be playing it quite safe. Guys, rapido. Andre, Andre, ipa, ipa. <sighs> I think I have to change my third dish. Why? Because I'm doing croquettes. But um, I don't have time. I just gotta have a bit of a think. I think I'm all right. Yeah, we're good. Whoops. He 
Ching, I'm really hoping you're going to do something Asian. Uh, yes, we're going to have a tuna tata, but with quail egg yolks. Where's the wasabi going? In there. Oh, go on, be generous. Then, because the prawns are so nice, we're just going to gently fry it with spring onions, ginger, um, and then serve it on straw mushrooms. We're going to have a fish fillet breadcrumbed and fried. Brilliant. Well, can I ask you how you feel about cooking with everybody in the market watching you? <laughs> if I don't look at them, I'm fine. I don't have time to look at them. Ping, although she's here in Barcelona, is sticking to what she knows, Asian food, and good on her. I'm impressed with our three. You know why? They're going for it. No half measures, they are absolutely going for it. Diez minuto. Ten minutes. We are tight, really, really tight. What sort of fish is it? No idea. She recommended it. Great. Come on. Luke, you've got about a minute left, mate. OK. Let's quick, 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 go. Jack, Jack, let's go. Time's up. Oh. Put back in. <laughs> Ping's Asian-inspired tapas are ginger soy prawns with enoki mushrooms tuna tartare with wasabi and quail's eggs, and fish fritters with sweet chilli cucumber salsa. It's fresh, no? Yes, it's fresh. It's really, really good. It's very nice. The flavours are very nice. <laughs> Those prawns are fabulous. The tuna tartare is great. The wasabi in the background is really lovely. And put that, that slimy egg yolk through it, fantastic. I like the deep fried fish balls as well with the cucumber. I think lovely flavours, John. I think tapas can adapt to anywhere in the world, and I think Ping has highlighted that brilliantly. I'm really proud of those dishes. Brilliant experience. I can't tell you, this is fantastic. I'm ready for more, and just throw it at me. I'll be fine. <laughs> Jack's made smoked paprika prawns with garlic, chilli and lemon, crispy calamari topped with gremolata, and boccaronis or anchovies, red pepper and fennel compote bruschetta. Fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. I think Jack's done a pretty good job overall. He has given you big, bold flavours. The prawns, the garlic, the chilli and the lemon, I think, great. There was a bitter note to it, which I really liked. The anchovy was salty, and then the rest of it sort of sweet and sour mix of that toast. Really good. And putting the gramolata on top of the crispy squid, I think, was inspired. It gave it a freshness. Very, very good, Jack. That was really tough, to cook out here in front of all those people. I've never done anything like that before. It's been a great introduction to Spain and great introduction to Barcelona. <laughs> Luke's tapas are guacamole and serrano ham bruschetta, crispy mussel with tomato salsa, and potato chorizo and cheese slices. Fantastic. The presentation is not really great to the eyes, but the flavour is, is good. I'm really disappointed with Luke's presentation. Melted cheese, sausage and a bit of potato, hey, it's a good thing. It's just as ugly as you like, that is a real shame. But I do like the guacamole, I think it's great with the crispy bread. The mustard is decent, but this is not a great start to his Spanish trip. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> I'm sorry I couldn't make you like something it. more beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I am extremely disappointed. Today should have been my round. Um, it just sort of like spurs me on, gives me more motivation. I'll be really, really going for it on the next one.
It's halfway through day one, and the finalists are moving ever closer to their ultimate challenge. To prepare them further, they are about to step into a creative world where tradition is being torn apart. They are meeting pastry chefs and close friends of Ferran Adria, Christian Escriba, and his wife, Patricia Schmid. Escriba created Adria's edible heart wedding dessert and El Bulli's last ever cake, a meter high sugar bulldog. I know Ferran Adria since 1987. We fell in love with each other and from then, from, from that time on, he's been my best friend ever since. If you see them both talking, they understand each other, but no one on the room can understand them. Escriba is also a rule breaker. For him, it's all about creating a pastry world that surprises the diner. From flying and exploding cakes, to edible walls and landscapes. My philosophy when working is trying to astonish, to excite, and to create a moment that will last in your mind forever. The heart of Escriba's studio is an edible pastry showroom. Sugar rush. Oh my god. Oh, I want to bring my daughter here. You have a field day. Many times people say, but you're insane. But I love that. Do you know why? Because I have a lot of fun. Welcome to my house. We'd like to invite you to eat this table. We're going to make the Barcelona map. Okay. Okay, right. All right. Are you ready? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Christian is remembered for doing something truly unique. So I will try and sort of take on some of that. The finalists have a variety of confectionery, including chocolates, crushed nuts, candied fruits, and desiccated coconut to create their edible Barcelona. I need them to get into the mindset, to be daring, like a child. Children are always daring. It's great to see someone properly pushing the boundaries. It's really uh, sort of inspiring. I feel like a kid. It's brilliant. This is fantastico. He wants to inject fun into pastry. I mean, how cool is that? Okay. Ahora os pido que hagáis algo para mí. The contestants have an hour and a half to surprise Christian and Patricia with a dessert they will never forget. You might astonish people with taste. You might surprise on a visual level. You can decorate someone's face. I will always look for the element that surprises me the most. It's easy for me to do since I do it every day. I have nothing to lose, but they do. It's kind of free reign here, you know, express and surprise. I think I understand his philosophy is whether I can translate that into my dessert it will be difficult, I think. All three of us could make a dessert out of the things we've got, but how can we make a dessert that's really going to surprise them and make them go, wow, that's, that's amazing. That's the challenge today. Come on, come on, come on. Think, 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 think. Just 
hope, hope this is okay. After a disappointing morning, Luke is hoping to impress with a combination of raspberries and white chocolate. The idea of this to create that element of surprise, you have everything you see on the plate will be white, uh, but as soon as you cut into everything, everything will become red. So the surprise is with the colour. Jack is making a mango parfait. The element of the unexpected will come with the help of tempered white chocolate. I've never, never tempered chocolate before. And some balloons. So what I'm going to do is coat them in chocolate and then when it's set, pop the, pop the balloon to leave a sphere, which I'll then hide my dessert with. I've never done this before. It could be a disaster. I'm just going to work out how I'm going to do this. Ping has decided to use the elements of a tiramisu and a plant pot to create her surprise. I hate gardening. Mint pot is the only thing that I can keep alive. You know, sometimes you're digging earth and it goes kung and it's like, hmm, there's something hard in there. That's what I kind of emulate, something to surprise him. Thing of beauty, that is. Okay. I'm pretty pleased with it. I just hope he likes it as well. All right, Jack. Okay. Yeah. Jack has made a mango parfait topped with a caramel brittle, caramelised mango, fresh raspberries and toasted hazelnuts, all hidden underneath a tempered white chocolate cloche. No es fácil aprender a, a templar el chocolate por primera vez. Hombre, es arriesgado, ¿eh? Congratulations. Thank you. And, bueno, la próxima ya la puedes hacer más grande. <laughs> for the family. ¿eh? <laughs> I did dinner and do it. Huh? Vale. No. Muy bien. Thank you very much. Before you're going, we'd like to give you to yourself. Made in oh. sugar. Thank it's you very much. I had a hard time making your hair. Uh, <laughs> I think it's very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Bye, Jack. I was massively pleased with that, actually. I sort of put myself out of my comfort zone quite a lot. I thought it was one of the best things I've ever done, so, uh, yeah, I was really impressed. I toast the coconut to make the soil. I hope I have enough mean leaves. Okay. Thank you. Ping has made a mint tiramisu plant pot. Strawberries, raspberries and tiramisu, all buried under coconut crumb and dark chocolate coated mint leaves. There is some more inside. Mm. Ah, yeah. ah, okay. Ah, okay. Very good. In English, <laughs> it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> In Spanish? Ah. Muy bueno. Muy bueno. Muy bueno. <laughs> <laughs> right? Gracias.
Pues la combinación de, de, de todos los sabores es muy correcta. Me ha gustado mucho, sí. <laughs> the thing that has surprised both of us is that we expected only leaves and the chocolate. We didn't expect that you'd make something inside of it. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. I'd like to thank you <laughs> with you. Oh, thank you very much. That's amazing. Thank you. For him and Patricia to say that's a good surprise is is what I want to achieve, so really happy. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm going to write encased in Spanish. It's kind of the name of the dish. Luke's Encased is a pyramid of popping candy and chocolate-filled raspberries encased in Italian meringue and raspberry syrup-filled white chocolate bonbons. O sea, dentro de ahí está la sorpresa. Yeah. <laughs> y esto a ver. Vamos a ver esto. Liquid bonbon. Mm? Surprised? <laughs> sí. Sí, porque han habido varias sorpresas. No ha habido una, ha habido varias. Okay. Es una conjunción de cosas simples que, pero que todas juntas lo, lo han hecho mágico. Really? Oh, thank you. <laughs> El espíritu que yo quería yes. está, está en este postre. Ah. Uh -huh. Thank you for Thank that. You. <laughs> I wanted to surprise you as well. <laughs> Sugar you. Brilliant. That's great. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> no, please. Please go ahead. Brilliant. Thank you. And I've never done chocolate writing before. I've never made Italian meringue. I've never used a blowtorch and I've never made it a liquid bonbon. So, yeah, I think I've really pushed myself today, and it was a risk, and it did pay off, so. I feel like I've kind of redeemed myself a little bit. Yeah, really happy. Today's just taught me to, to just do whatever you're feeling, and just think a bit differently. It's been a long, hard day, but my God, it's so much fun. I love Spain. It's day two in Barcelona. In just a few hours, the contestants will be cooking the most important lunch of their lives. And they're on the way to meet the chef who will be on hand to help. Carles Abian started working as a trainee chef at El Bulli with Ferran Adria in 1984. Everything we did was completely new, groundbreaking. I remember the public opinion was totally against us at the time. People said that we were crazy. But to me, it was a bit sort of uh, rock and roll. Carlos spent 16 years with Adria before earning a Michelin star for his own restaurant. He now has five venues across Barcelona. Carles is opening up one of his kitchens to show the contestants exactly how the food evolved. Hello. Hey. Hi. Nice to meet you. I'm Jack. Nice to meet you. Jack. I'm Luke. Nice to meet you. Luke. Ping. Nice Ping. to meet you. Welcome. Excuse me, my English is terrible, but um, your Spanish is better. Okay, we have lots to do. Come with me. Okay. It's a real privilege to cook with such an esteemed chef. It's exciting. 
What a great opportunity to learn about Spanish cuisine from, from the best. But it's, it's important. We are dealing with like the rolling stone of cookery here. Yeah. Okay. Carles wants the finalists to cook three pivotal dishes, illustrating the evolution from El Bulli to where he is today. Vale. These are dishes that form part of my DNA. These dishes are like my own children. Ping is first with Gaudi's red mullet, a delicate dish created at El Bulli when the only modern food in Spain was French. The Spanish food was very traditional and the concept of modern cuisine just didn't exist at that moment. It's a dish that marks the change in direction of Spanish and Catalan cuisine. The dish was based on the fresh ingredients of the Mediterranean, with a topping inspired by the mosaics of Gaudi. It may look simple today, but when first seen almost 30 years ago, it was revolutionary. I have to get this right to uh, reflect the flavours and the look of Catalonia. It's kind of sort of molecular stuff that I haven't done before. Luke will be cooking a dish created seven years later and one of El Bulli's most famous the deconstructed potato omelette. It represented the point when Adria and his team started to really pull apart Spanish cuisine. Deconstruction doesn't make much sense nowadays because there's been so much deconstruction that it has lost its meaning. But 20, 25 years ago, it was a whole different story because no one had tried deconstructing something as simple as a potato omelette. The dish had all the flavours of an omelette, but its textures were radically different. An onion confit, egg yolk sabayon, and one of El Bulli's legacies, a foam. Made from the potatoes, their cooking water, cream and olive oil, aerated using a soda siphon. Omelette scene is very quick food that you can do, uh, you know, immediately. This is an extreme omelette. Jack's dish is from Carles's current Michelin-starred menu and celebrates where Spanish food is today. Sous vide Mediterranean whiting with dehydrated skin, olive oil potato, crispy breadcrumbs and a vinegar air. Incredible to be able to make air. I've never thought I'd have the opportunity to make air before, or flavoured air, so yeah, it's great. Technique is an instrument only, no end result. The flavour is important. Whew. Hot. This is a difficult bit. Perfect, eh? He's better than Ferradria. <laughs> <laughs> So good. Gracias. A ti, cariño. Muchos gracias. <laughs> if you asked me three months ago um, what, to create a dish like that, I thought, no, can't do it. And now, being in Spain, it's like anything is possible. I can do that. Yeah, of course I can do it. As long as I remember everything, keep focused, we'll be happy fine.
No, but mum. No, but mum. <laughs> it's okay. It's a moment of truth. More energy. Ahí, mira, va, more, 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 more. Three. Ah, es verdad, ¿eh? Yeah. Okay. You finish it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible, eh? Oh. All right, man. It's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. Thank you. No, no, sure. Oh, good. Thank you. Well, <laughs> the creative deconstruction is really, really interesting. Thank you, Luck. Thank you. Yes. I've got a couple of ideas for things I want to do that kind of really fall in line with this kind of stuff. Perfect, eh? Oh my God! It's exceptional! Amazing! <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. William. I think he liked it, so yeah, I was pretty pleased about that. It wasn't an easy dish, and it's just great to use the different techniques that he uses in his cooking and be able to create something that he's done. Now Ping, Jack and Luke face their biggest challenge of the competition so far. Creating one dish that combines their own food with everything they've learnt during their time in Spain. There is a lot of pressure on. We learn about foams and air. It's, it's, it's amazing. He's going to want to see us using Spanish influences wherever we can, and I think that's going to be the real challenge for me. Spoon, spoon, spoon. I want to showcase what I've learned. I'd like to finish Spain for a high. That's going to be tough, you know? It's going to be... Yeah, it's going to be really tough. <laughs> With two hours until lunch, the contestants still don't know that their dishes will be tasted by Ferran Adria, one of the most influential chefs ever. Ping has chosen to cook a dish of longustines with Asian spiced shredded pork bonbons. She is also planning to use one of El Bulli's most renowned techniques and make an air from clementines. I know I'm taking a risk today, but you know, why not? I'm here once and this is my time to do um, what I've learned. To be honest, if I can pull it off, great, because it will be a sense of achievement. I've never done anything like that before. If not, I've tried it, I give it my best, and I lived it. Hey! Better, better. Do you want to boil with vegetables first? Vegetable stock, break it down, and then press it. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Inspired by the different textures he has seen, Jack has 11 different elements planned for his dish. Yeah, it's very British ingredients, lamb, mint, peas. But I just want to try and bring it to Spain somehow, you know, using olive oils, using foams, that sort of thing.
Luke has chosen to go down a different route with his lamb dish, influenced by one of the concepts that was central to the El Bulli of the 1990s. Basically, it's a deconstructed moussaka, um, which is a Greek dish, um, but it's still very Mediterranean. It is a culmination of my time in Spain, you know, being creative, what we did with Carlos. This is hopefully, you know, a similar philosophy. Luke's deconstructed dish also involves breaking down a whole side of lamb. We've got time, so, uh, yeah, I'm sure I'll be all right. With just over an hour until service, outside, Carles is waiting to greet the first of the guests. His old boss and mentor. Hey guys, attention. Hey. I present to you the, my guest for today. Oh, he tastes God. your recipe. Hi, hello. hello. <laughs> Do you hello. know? Welcome to Barcelona. ¿Y por qué se apuntaron en MasterChef? I love cooking. Ahora, sobre todo, tiene que ser muy importante que lo tiene que hacer como hobby, que, no, que después no se dedique a profesional. ¿eh? <risa> es mucho más bonito, es mucho más bonito como hobby. La gente cree que es muy bonito después y es un, es un oficio muy, muy duro. It, it, it is used to be my hobby until I come to MasterChef and it is really stressful. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Barcelona. Thank you. ¿Qué hace, qué hace, ¿El qué hace normalmente? ¿De qué trabaja? Uh, I just graduated from university. ¿Qué, qué estudiaba? Uh, geography. O sea, es un poco diferente. ¿eh? Hola, <laughs> 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 nice to meet you. <laughs> okay. ¿Y por qué? Por qué, por qué, qué, hace, ¿Qué hacía antes? I, uh, I work with, in robotics and automation. Hostia, esto, esto, <laughs> hostia, hostia, que esto, esto, esto es lo que nos hace falta, ¿eh? Yeah, well, maybe after the competition is over, we can look at a couple of things. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> bueno, mucha suerte. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias, gracias. <laughs> Farad Adria as our guest. This is going to be, like, the biggest challenge ever. Don't tell me who we're cooking for. I'd rather not know, and then it's all OK. Cooking in an unfamiliar kitchen, and now we're cooking for one of the best chefs in the world, if not, you know, ever. Oh, well, yeah, brilliant. I was this nervous, now I'm this nervous. <laughs> to add to the pressure, Adria is being joined by Christian Escriba and his other close friend, Spanish gastronomy guru, Rosa Torres. <laughs> Cooking for Ferran is a great challenge. It's difficult. It's not easy. How do you surprise Ferran? He's done everything. Do you understand? You can't use a technique Ferran doesn't know about. What's the problem? What's the problem? So many great things have been done in creativity until now that it's very hard to do something new. You have to have passion and love, but this is a result of good technique. I'm hungry. Tell you the truth, I've been told so much about cooking, so let's eat. Pressured, pressured, pressured. How you doing, bud? You alright? Yeah, I think so. Not feeling well at all, though, mate. Well, really got a massive headache. Really? Massive drink? Headache. Yeah, drink? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, a splitting headache. <laughs> yeah. With half an hour to go, Luke is still prepping his lamb cutlets. Oh, yeah. Ping's pork bonbons and longustines are prepped, and she's moved on to making an eye-catching accompaniment. It's a potato that's shaped like a mandarin. It's 
just a bit of fun. What is this? My Mandarin potatoes. <laughs> it's a once in a lifetime. If I don't push the boat out, when am I going to? Okay. Right. Not only is Jack cooking three different styles of lamb, he's also decided that this is the time to try something new. It's the first time I've ever made mint jelly before. If you just were to serve a rack of lamb um, with potatoes and veg, you'd be a little underwhelmed. So I think you've got to try and elevate it to the, to the next level. Ran is sit now at the table. First up is Jack. He has 11 elements to plate up perfectly. Jack has made herb crusted lamb loin, a braised lamb belly croquette, and smoked lamb rack with pea puree, fresh peas, mint jelly, crushed potatoes, anchovies, an anchovy puree, a lamb and red currant sauce, and a pea air. It's a build on something that my mother used to cook at dinner parties and on special occasions. And I thought that today was a very special occasion, so I wanted to cook it for you three. Thank you. This dish can be 10 different dishes at the same time. If I take the air with that, it's one dish. If I take the potato puree with mint, I make mint potato puree. It's a fantastic piece of work. It's amazing for an amateur chef to make something like this. It's incredible. I'm going to tell you what I like about it. First, when it was brought in, the appearance, the colors, how it was made, and also the game Ferran was talking about. With this dish, I have been able to make different combinations, and each one was good. You could easily find this dish as main course on a restaurant's menu. It's the kind of level you might expect to get in a two Michelin star restaurant. I'm believable. <laughs> yes, very, very, very good. Thank you. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Today was a once in a lifetime opportunity. It's probably the highest pressure situation I've ever been in. And to, to come out of it the other side, having not had a disaster, and to come out having produced some food that I was pleased with and they, they seem to really enjoy. Just amazing. The time is... Yeah, we're really... Finished. Yeah, we're... we're okay. uh, yeah, close, close. I like to not really think about who I'm trying to serve, you know, just try and cook the best I can. Wow, that's up. <laughs> Hopefully, these guests will like it. These normal, normal guests who are just normal diners. Absolutely fine. What do you think? Are we hot enough here? 
Oh. Take it easy. Yeah. Take it easy. Okay. Luke has deconstructed a Greek moussaka, serving lamb in a herb marinade and lamb in breadcrumbs with an aubergine stack and a baba ganoush sauce. But that is your goal, to separate the aubergine from the meat, right? Yeah, that, that was my goal, to, to, to make it look different, you know, to if, someone, if I told someone I was serving moussaka, if they got this, it would be a surprise. <laughs> I'm a real carnivore. I love meat. It's absolutely great. I love it because it is very tender. The problem is, I don't know which I like better of the two ways, this one or the other one. It, it's, it's, it's very tasty, as Christian said. But you'll always find somebody who says, ah, no, 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 I like the meat not to be so well cooked. It's really difficult. There, there, there are many elements, and it's, it's a complex dish. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Tonight you have to go out and have a drink, right? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. I'm feeling relieved, sort of mentally exhausted, and uh, but, um, overall really, you know, really pleased. Maximum five minutes. Okay. Hello. Hello. Ping has called her dish the little things. Asian pulled pork bonbons, roast langoustine, mandarin potato, a langoustine sauce and a clementine air. It's a reconstruction of a dish my um, husband made for me. And also the clementine is there because my daughter loves clementines. So it's a celebration of love. I love it. The way you cook the shellfish. I love it all. I love the composition. I love the tasting. I love everything, and I really love the love story. <laughs> because at the end, I'm sure that both Ferran and Rosel would agree with me, cuisine is that, I mean, uh, love. 
Ferran doesn't agree. Hay mucha gente que tiene amor que cocina There are muy mal. People full of love who cook really bad. Yeah. <laughs> bueno, Ping, muy bien. Well done, Ping. Very good. I really like the balance of your dish. Because you have one product, the pork, which is fatty. You have a fish, and after that, a fruit that has helped us to clean the mouth and degrease. And the truth is that technically it's really well done. And the Mandarin air, doing airs, it is always very difficult. They normally do not have any flavor, but this is really well done. I don't know if you know that El Bulli is where we actually invented the airs. I know. The beauty and the beast here, it's really good. The croquette is beast, it's uh, something really coarse, and then the air and the langoustine are sensual and sophisticated. Really interesting. For me, the most important thing is that technically it's impeccable. Gracias, muchas gracias. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you. Oh, but you're classic. Not many people can say this, but I have cooked for Farah and Adria, the world's greatest chef. And I pulled it off. It's exactly what I want to present in terms of flavors, and um, it worked, and they like it, and that's all that matters to me. Oh, God, I'm drained. I've really pushed myself and I've had to work extremely hard. But it's been absolutely worth it. I've enjoyed every moment. My time in Barcelona has just been absolutely fantastic. Definitely it's going to make me express myself more in my food. Awesome, incredible, creative, just magical. I think it's extraordinary to find amateurs who can cook to this level. Incredible. Okay. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias a vosotros. Next time, the journey comes to an end. Ping, Luke, and Jack face their last challenge. Before one of them is crowned Master Chef Champion 2014. I wouldn't be able to replicate it. It's absolutely stunning. You are very fortunate there is a table between us now, otherwise you might have got a kiss. Our MasterChef champion, 